Today, we're going to talk about the company eBay, how they adopted open feature at scale. We're going to cover three parts. The state of the union at eBay before open feature and feature flags, how we did the whole adoption and migration, and thirdly, what's the current situation and what are we looking forward to? When I say scale, I'm talking about 15,000 employees, 4,000 plus engineers, and thousands and thousands of features behind flags. My name is Chetan Kapoor. I am the product lead for feature management and experimentation platform at eBay. I'm also the chief evangelist of feature flagging at eBay. And in my career trajectory, I've worked with a, a travel tech company, Expedia, FinTech, Innova, and now eBay, which is an e-commerce company. I'm Justin Abrams. I uh, am currently at Thrive Market, formerly of eBay, where I was a principal architect and the chair of the open source program there. Um, I, was, I am a maintainer of the Java SDK uh, for open feature and served on the governing board. And I've spent a bunch of time in large companies and uh, e-commerce. Thank you. And today in this, in this uh, presentation, Justin and I are going to exactly present you the way we did this migration together, like partner in crimes, tag team style. What is eBay, right? Some of you guys here might already know or have heard of eBay. Some of you have not. And that's okay. Um, for the ones who have heard of it, you may not know the scale and the, and, the, and the game that we are playing at. So I'll tell you a little bit about it today. So eBay is an e-commerce giant with 132 million buyers and millions of sellers. We are known for our unique inventory of items, roughly 2.1 billion listings. And the three key categories of people that people are very excited about to shop on our eBay, one is called collectibles. Think about like trading cards or your you know, sneakers that come out. Second category would be pre-loved items like your fashion clothes, your expensive watches, or luxury bags. And the third area is car parts and accessories. What, what we come in the news for and how, what differentiates us from all the competitors is two, part, two things. One, we give guarantees. What do, you give, what do we give guarantees for? Authenticity. So if you go and buy a Gucci bag from eBay and it says authenticity guarantee, you are buying a Gucci bag. Second thing is around fitment guarantee, which means if you guys are, let's say you're buying a part of your carburetor for an Audi A6 or for a Ford Fiesta, we make sure that it fits. And then finally, we have a huge love for our sellers that we're known for. So let's talk a little bit about how eBay and Open Feature kind of connect to one another. This started from an internal program called the Velocity Program. This was a 300-person cross-organizational, a 300-team cross-organizational effort uh, that was officially focused on making software delivery a competitive advantage. It was kind of the tagline for the team. Uh, the team was staffed with uh, principal and senior principal architects that had a lot of industry experience in, in software delivery. And the program had three aspects that made it successful. First, there was sponsorship from, from executives. We had CTO and CPO um, sponsorship for the program. Uh, second, we had a very clear directive. Uh, this making software delivery a competitive advantage is a very crystallizing, is it in scope, yes or no? Um, and the, the third thing was we had the budget and time to make this happen. Um, each engineering team had a percentage of their total time that they could spend on work allocated to this velocity initiative. I think it was like 10%. In practice, this was a ground up reworking of how we thought about feature delivery. How do we make it safer, easier, um, and quicker uh, at eBay? Uh, this was driven primarily through the Dora and SAFE methodologies, if you're familiar with those. And there were three pillars that were really critical to the success of our work. First, that executive sponsorship turned into really wide latitude and what changes we needed to make. So we had, you know, go figure out the problem and go fix it, uh, sort of um, breadth, which was really helpful. Um, the second was finding the pockets internal to eBay that were already doing the right thing. And 
with 300 teams, there was no shortage of people who got some aspect of software delivery right, and it was about celebrating the work that they're doing and making it, making their work visible and saying, this is the behavior we want, please keep doing this, congratulations to this team for doing great stuff, um, and kind of giving them an official blessing of, of that work and, and, and celebrating that achievement. And the third thing was kind of putting our thumb on the scale around the priorities for the platform teams uh, to ensure that critical support requests were um, handled in a timely manner, like we're missing this feature and it's making us develop slow, great, you need to go work on that now, use your velocity budget to do that. Um, as well as thinking through the unknown gaps in our platform, um, which is where Open Feature came in. So there were three problems at eBay's uh, for, for the developer ecosystem. First, and this was the, the primary one for the Velocity Group, code was stuck in review. The, the review process was really slow, and that meant that I can't merge my code until so-and-so merges their code. And so I'm gonna keep adding to my pull request uh, because I'm waiting on them, I have these large batches of changes. And that was really negative for us because one, those are features that customers would really like to have, presumably, uh, and so getting them out to production should be a priority for us. Um, and larger code reviews mean riskier code deploys. Um, and so keeping that batch size really small is, um, was a goal that we had. Second, there were multiple configuration platforms, and they targeted different sections of the stack. The mobile group had their feature flagging tool. There were a few different ones on the back end, and we also had a, an experimentation framework that people were using to do flags. And the downside was that they had very different user experiences. They had different guarantees and different features. And so it was a very confusing landscape for people. Third, there was a more of a culture of DIY rather than relying on broader platforms. And so this was, I'm gonna solve this problem for me in a kind of janky way, and I'm not going to make it nice enough that everyone can use it, because I don't have that kind of time. Um, and that at the scale that eBay operates is a very uh, not so nice situation. Um, so that, that kind of lack of platform mindset was, was a big challenge for us. Looking at this, we saw a, a lack of ubiquitous flag usage as one of the problems that needed solving. That would help us reduce this code stuck in review. We could have smaller pull requests behind flags and we could really invest in that platform. That led us into a decision on whether we build something ourselves or buy something. And we evaluated a bunch of vendors, uh, as well as looking at kind of the open source offering that was out there. The big deciding factor for eBay was that we have a really mature experimentation engine uh, that operates at scale, and leadership wanted a really nice user experience that seamlessly blended the two. And that was a really hard thing for us to get with a vendor solution. And so we ended up building it ourselves. As the chair of the open source program, I found that like building something yourself rather than using open source is always like a really risky uh, choice. And that's kind of where we adopted open feature that provided us this kind of open source facade layer where we can say, we'll write against open features spec. And then in the back end, we'll use our internal thing but if for some reason that turns out to be a terrible choice, we can always swap to a vendor later and the code doesn't need to change so much. And so I authored uh, the Java SDK uh, at the beginning um, and got involved in specification writing and represented kind of eBay's internal use cases. Um, and yeah, now I'm gonna hand it over to Chayton to talk a bit about what the platform we were integrating into looked like. Thank you, Justin. Yeah, so Justin kind of gave you, gave you a good walkthrough of what was the lay of the land before, right? So this is the platform that we chose and that you're seeing on your screen, and internally we call it Touchstone. It's an experimentation life cycle that, that you see, actually, a five-step life cycle that we already had on our platform, where all features that were getting rolled out or that needed the decision to make sure customers, we, we, we were doing customer testing, our platform was used to run A-B tests before a feature was rolled out. 
So we saw a very good synergy in incorporating feature flags you know, in this whole flow, because the whole idea was to encourage more test and learn culture. Right? Whether you're doing feature testing or QA, or whether you're running experiments in that flow, there was a good synergy. And what you see on the screen in the top is very huge good adoption numbers. We already had all the teams, all the engineers on that platform who were supposed to practice this methodology and workflow. So it totally made sense to incorporate that in one go. All we had to do was how do we enable feature flags on this platform? And we went through in three steps. One, of course, we use open feature. And not only you know, Justin authored the Java SDK, but we also authored the eBay-specific providers and hooks. But what made it special for us is, in our platform, we had 25 plus legacy APIs that, that you know, we had kept on creating over the period of time. So this was a great opportunity for us to make, actually unify all the legacy APIs and make it super easy. And second, it, this open feature API was one API that we used for feature flags and experimentation. So developers were very happy getting you know, two value in one API. Second thing, we together spoke with a lot of developers and we found out what is the most important thing that you actually need in feature flags, like the basics, like table stakes. And first part was kill switch. What that meant was developers said, hey, if you want me to roll out thousands and thousands of features behind flags, you better give me a guarantee that if I want to stop an incident immediately, I should be able to do that. And second was audience aware targeting. So Justin mentioned that we had different kind of capabilities present in different config systems. So we said, okay, we need a very good granular way of doing customer-based targeting. So an example of before versus after targeting. The basic targeting was like, hey, I want to target this feature in US versus UK versus Brazil. Versus what we gave them is, hey, I want to target, I only want to show this feature in UK on a Chrome browser to a person who actually has a sneaker in their checkout cart right now. I want to show them the feature. So they were able to do that. That was very precise, very granular, very powerful. And third thing is we simplified the onboarding. We wanted to actually encourage all engineers to use this platform for feature testing. So the basis was remove the blocker to entry. So we improved our documentation internally, and we also hired a technical program manager to actually identify areas on how onboarding could be simplified. So to kick off that program, we started with three developers. Um, we started with education. What are flags? Why do you care about flags? Um, when should you use them? And then when should you not use them? Uh, and then who can you go for help? Uh, and at the beginning, the answer was me or Chayden. Um, we got these three developers to implement kind of a hello world feature flag, which you can see here. Um, uh, and from that point, they served as kind of like onboarding buddy for future teams that were onboarding onto this platform. You say, great, now we have three more developers who can be in your, who can I go for, to for help? Because they have experience releasing this into production. And so on that success, we moved from individual developers to, uh, to broader teams. And these individuals are very important, right? We, we specifically chose these individuals who are very motivated and who, who are already operating in the right velocity mindset, as Justin mentioned. So they almost became like our mini influencers within the company. So then from mini influencers, we went to the strategy of, hey, now let's incorporate that in the teams. So we identified 21 different teams together, and we said, hey, we're going to run multiple batch of pilots with you guys to learn and actually co-create the roadmap for an MVP of feature flags. There were three rounds of pilots that were done in every quarter, so three quarters. In the first round, our goal of learning was, how do we make this feature flag useful for everybody? And we found that there were three key barriers for that. One, it was not available on all tech stacks, so we expanded our tech stack uh, coverage. Second was around tracking. As I said, we were doing experimentation and feature flag together. And in experimentation, we need to drop some kind of XT tech tags to ensure that we are you know, uh, putting it for control and treatment, and we can identify them later. And third thing was any errors. We found a lot of small errors and bugs when we were working with all these teams. So that was our first round of testing. Second round of testing was more focused on how do we uh, give more value to our engineers who are actually starting to use feature flags. And there were like two main areas which it was missing. One, they wanted us to give them 
a lot of different kinds of targeting capabilities, as I mentioned. So they identified certain gaps there, and we filled that. And second was around error monitoring. So they wanted to make sure that if I'm rolling out a feature, I want to be able to see if I'm causing any errors in my apps. As simple as that. And then the third batch, which was the final round, we identified what was needed for us to scale it to massive adoption. And there were two key problems there. One was the change propagation time, which means when you go to a platform like that for like you know, so many millions of customers and you switch on or switch off a change, or you change the targeting, or you change some configuration of a flag, you want that to be almost instantly reflected for the customer. Maybe not instantly, but as, as fast as possible. At that time, we were at 15 minutes of a lag time. It was not acceptable. Second was the evaluation latency. So when, when any, you know, any of your websites actually call and ask, hey, do I need to show this feature? Yes and no. That time of evaluation latency at that time was 25 milliseconds, completely unacceptable. That was impacting our site speed budget for all different teams because every team had limited site speed budget on what they could use. So they were like, hey, I can't use 50 flags. Another way to think it through the kind of the rounds of feedback were like step one, make it possible for people to use flags. Step two, make it actually useful. And then step three, make that process scalable for people. And then, then basically, once we were done building the MVP, that's where we had to squeeze the real juice, roll it out to everybody, get people off the 25 plus legacy systems in a humongous company, which was a task. So what we did is we, have, we had a dedicated team. Justin, myself, there was a program manager, as I mentioned, there was a senior architect, and there was a lead engineer who's sitting in the audience, Ganga. Thank you. And then along with that dedicated team, we had a strategy, a simple five-step strategy. One was for all different domain teams who needed to migrate, they needed a real budget because it was a cost, right? You need to move from old systems to new. So we requested Velocity to give, them 10, give us 10% of the budget, and they were very happy to do so. Second, we made sure that the instructions given to all engineers and teams to migrate was super duper simple and easy to follow. And third, which I want to really put the pin on, is getting a commitment from the people who had to do the work. So we went to the Velocity Forum, which was like, you know, filled with 50 to 80 engineering leaders, and we said, guys, you need to put your plan on this paper, on a template that we gave, and you need to give us an explicit sign and a thumbs up that you're going to do this. And that was very helpful at the start, because we knew who committed to this. And then fourth was making sure the monitoring or the migration experience was self-served. We had a Sherlock dashboard to actually see the migrations were happening and where, you know, which teams were lagging behind. And it also served as a way to debug. So, you know, anybody who was like, hey, have I done the migration or not? Has it worked or not? You could very easily troubleshoot and identify, was it complete? And finally, we had to do a lot of announcements and communications through newslet internal newsletters and through escalation emails, because not everybody was actually at the forefront of this. And this is strategy, right? With a great strategy comes a great execution plan. So we had some massive work on execution side. We sent out 300 plus Jira's for all these teams. We had thousands of Slack messages, communication up, communication down. And finally, we had uncountable stakeholder updates that we had to give for this. So that takes us to where, where we are today. I know we sold you billions, but it turns out the number's trillions of uh, calls made per day um, to this kind of feature flag evaluation engine. Um, that encompasses over 2,500 experiments at any given time. Um, this is rolled out to thousands of developers. That 15 minute change propagation is now down to one minute, which is kind of where the, the happy place for, for folks internally. And that 25 millisecond evaluation latency is very importantly down to three milliseconds to decide is this feature on or off? Are they in this experiment or not? And so super congratulations to the, to the eBay engineering group for, their, for, for these technical achievements. This is really impressive. Yeah, and now that we have established this, now what's in the future for us? There are three main things, right? You saw the life cycle of an experiment, how it looks like. We see with the feature flags being incorporated, we want to create a very happy developer workflow on our system. So before experimentation, we envision a feature testing flow, which will be trunk-based development, dog fooding your own product with internal employees or beta users, and then third would be some kind of canary testing. And then you run experiments, and then after an experiment, do you, you, you gradual rollout or progressive rollout. 
And then second area of investments, as I said, we have 4,000 plus engineers. There's a lot of education and empowerment that goes into feature flagging in the new modern ways of working. So we're going to really invest on that in terms of professionally, how can we create either curriculum or boot camps or things of that, of that nature. And uh, finally, we will be investing in developer happiness. How? We have a developer experience survey that goes out every quarter. And we continuously directly talk to the developers who have given us bad or neutral feedback to understand you know, what are we missing. At the same time, we also ask people who love us, why do you love us? So we really want to create a great developer experience and we stand for it. Finally, uh, there's a lot that we're looking forward to in, in, in terms of working with Open Feature in the near future. So we have three main areas that we are going to be talking to them about. One is building stuff together. So we have some specs that we want to discuss with them. One would be like bulk, where if somebody wants to evaluate multiple feature flags in one go, can they do that? Second area would be flag hierarchy. An example I like to give is Christmas flags. So in eBay or Amazon, you would think about Black Friday scale or a Christmas sale happening. There's tons of things that get you know, released on at 11.59 PM and they get shut down after the Christmas day is done. So in order to control multiple different you know, features by one team, instead of having hundreds of flags, if we can control them with select number of flags and be more well-governed. Uh, second area is growing internal champions. So we did start with having a few champions, so we have some of them, but we really want to make it a little more you know, formal and actually curate more people who can master uh, working with feature flags and uh, educate more people. And finally, empowering our community. So we have some ideas that we want to share with Open Feature to say, hey, can we, can we co-host some meetups for you? Can we create more community gatherings and encourage folks to talk about this? And so on and so forth. Yes, Justin. OK, and so we talked a little bit about the state of the world before eBay, how through the Velocity program, we made a large scale platform change and what the effect of that change was on uh, at, at kind of our scale and uh, developer happiness. And so with that, we'll open it up for questions. Woo! Big round of applause, everybody. So we probably only have time for like maybe two questions. So whoever's up here first, introduce yourself and go, go right ahead. Just, there we go. You're good. We can hear you. We can hear you. Just yeah, you're shout good. it out. I'm Dave. Um, I was curious about the portion of your talk where you're talking about uh, the second loop of feedback. Your developers are coming back to you and they're saying, hey, you know what would be cool is if we could target X, and I'd like to know more about X. So how did we, the question is how did we allow for custom targeting rules? No, the question is uh, what sorts of targeting gaps did you find that you yeah, had when I you ran your second round of feedback? Question. Yeah, I can answer that question. Yeah, thank you for the question. So one was they wanted to target internal employees. That was the first thing that they said, hey, if you want us to do QA, UAT with people and things like that, then you need to give us more you know, granular capability. I, I, I only want to target my team, myself, or the judges of a hackathon that's happening in the company and stuff like that, right? Or beta users, like eBay has beta users like buyers and sellers, and if we just want to roll out and get their early feedback, how can we get that? Second area was more around custom rules, where you know different teams had a different notion of what they wanted to target, so we created contextual based targeting to allow, to enable them to do that. And thirdly, we integrated with the CDP platform, customer uh, data platform, which had all different segments and audiences which are more relevant to eBay specific uh, use cases. Awesome. All right, we got time for one more 30 for second question. Go ahead. Hi, Scott. I'm just curious, how do you guys discuss innovation internally at eBay and how has Open Feature enhanced your feedback flow in, into enabling experimentation? as innovation. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, so we, I'll, I'll take this one. So we have an innovation change agency group, which we are working together. You know, since this whole new AI wave is coming together, there's actually a complete, like, clear professional, uh, you know, space of, like, discussing innovation in different groups. Uh, we do innovation hackathons, invent weeks, to actually encourage everybody to come and, you know, uh, um, build their ideas, pitch their ideas to judges, and it gets rolled out, like, as, as fast as possible, as soon as the winners are declared. So there's a lot of different momentum around that. And this feature flag, working with, like, developing with feature flags is actually encouraging more people to drive things faster with velocity, so that we can try out, test out more ideas as early as possible. Does that, okay. 
Amazing. So we've only got about 20 seconds on the clock. So, um, uh, so I think we'll save it. So if you've got more questions for Chayton and Justin, please come find them. If you're looking for an enterprise at scale use case of feature flags, these are the people to talk to. Um, you're going to be sticking around, I'm guessing, after yes. the summit today. So yes. find them, um, have these conversations. And can I get one last huge round of applause? Chayton and Justin, thank you so much.